In this video, we'll discuss how to make your project accessible, some tips and tricks on where to get started, and what are the legal ramifications of not having an accessible website. Welcome to How to Business, I am Frederick Weiss, and today we are talking with Todd Libby, Accessibility Engineer. Todd, welcome to the show. Thank you, Frederick. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's really great to have you. Todd, I want to ask you a question about accessibility, but first, why don't we find out a little bit about you? Could you tell us in your own words? Yeah, I am an Accessibility Engineer at Webstaurant Store. I do auditing and front end, a little bit of front end work. I have been dabbling with programming and computers for geez, a long time. I am long in the tooth on the internet and I am an invited expert as well at the W3C. Excellent. Thank you so much for that context, Todd. So Todd, let's ask the main question here. How do we make websites accessible? That is a very loaded question because you ask a hundred accessibility people that question, you're probably going to get 200 different answers. But basically, how do we make things accessible? We test. We start at the beginning of every project and we implement accessibility from the start, not halfway through or bolt it on to the end like a lot of companies do or have to do these days. When they are faced with either a lawsuit, which is very commonplace now, or they realize somebody, for example, may have talked with a stakeholder and said, we need to make things accessible. And that made the stakeholders say, okay, let's do it for whatever reason. And they do it that way. What does accessibility actually mean? Some of us have a general idea. Some of us know the specifics, but when someone approaches and says, we need to make sure that this project is accessible. What exactly does that mean? What is the nitty gritty of accessibility? What are the nut and bolts that we need to look at? That would be making, whether it's a website or a web app, that would be making that website or web app accessible to everyone, meaning there are no barriers for people to say, I can't use this product, or I can't use this brand, or I can't use this website. And that encompasses a lot of different things. Not just the blind, not just the deaf users. It encompasses performance as far as somebody doesn't have the list iPhone, for instance, or somebody's in a rural area and they don't have a high-speed connection. Those can be a couple of barriers as well. Bandwidth could be a play. I've heard this from Jeffrey Zeldman, where he said the internet is for everyone. I believe that's true. Sometimes we don't think about everyone. We tend to live in our own bubble, but when we think about accessibility, it's, it's not just about, as you said, people with impairments of vision or hearing. There's many different scenarios, such as you might be rocking a baby with a one arm and trying to look something up or bandwidth, as you pointed out, or a device. It's, it's, there's a lot of different disabilities, even situational, like you said, rocking a baby to sleep in your arms. Eyeglasses are an, an assistive technology. It's There's so many that I could choose from, but a good example would be breaking your arm, for instance, and you can't use that arm. And now you're using one hand to type on the keyboard or navigate 
with the keyboard if you have a broken mouse and you're waiting for a new mouse. Those can be a, a couple of different things also. So why is accessibility important for business? Earlier you touched on the legal aspects. Is, is there any issues that a business may need to be cognizant of for such things? Yes. A uh, perfect example is the Domino's Pizza case where Domino's was sued because their website and I believe the web app, or the web app, I believe, was not accessible by a blind user. And that got dragged out for a while. But in the end, the person who was using or trying to use their website won the case. And it doesn't take a lot to make your site accessible. Now, if in the situation of Domino's, what would have cost them $36,000, I believe it was, turned out to be millions because mm -hmm. they kept going through the court and appealing the case to a higher court. Basically, businesses will get sued. That's the bottom line. If you're a business and you have an inaccessible site, you will get sued, especially if it's, for instance, a financial site. If it's a retail site and the med medical field, those sites are common that will get sued. Overlays, which is a totally different uh, topic, will get you sued as well. So for those, I'll go through real quickly. An, an accessibility overlay, and I use that term loosely, is a panel that comes up when you click on an icon on a website that is supposed to help you turn on and off features. And accessibility is not a feature. Accessibility is a problem. And it's known to many in the accessibility community that overlays hurt rather or even harm rather than help or fix accessibility issues. So basically, the bottom line to answer your question is you will get sued uh, sooner or later. And you have government sites that have to follow Section 508. You have the ADA, the American uh, for Disabilities Act, and WCAG, the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. Sites are recommended to follow, but that's not a law. So you, there's a few different things and a few different reasons why businesses should follow. If you're shutting out disabled people, 15 to 25 percent of the world population is disabled. In the U.S. alone, it's 15 to 20, I believe percent of the country is disabled and that's a big demographic and think about the terms of i believe it was just it was either hearing the deaf or it was either deaf or blind users make up about 480 million dollars in disposable income i believe also is in the 1.8 trillion dollar range where all users, I believe, just in the United States alone, that was disposable income. So there's a lot of income you're missing out on if you're shutting people out. Thank you, Todd. That's great. What would be uh, a great resource or a first step to take when you're thinking about accessibility? A lot of different places. I would say if you're in the Twitter space, go on Twitter and ask about accessibility there. The community, for the most part, is very open and gracious and acceptant, accepting to answer questions that people have. There's a Slack channel that's by email invite only, but if you ask Twitter or wherever, somebody could probably get you a link, an invite if you provide an email for them to the Ally Slack channel. Reading about accessibility, even joining the W3C like I did, it's been three years ago, even though I did practice accessibility far before that. But what I have learned in the W3C is just, I don't think I would be where I am today if I hadn't joined the W3C. So that and just finding the people, like I said, on Twitter or on the Slack channel that are in the accessibility field that can answer questions for you. Can you name at least one or two people that would be a good resource to check out? Let's see. There are so many. I would say Stephen Faulkner on Twitter. 
and can't remember his handle off the top of my head, but him and Meryl K. Evans which her handle is Meryl K. Evans, I believe, on Twitter as well. Those are two people you could ask. Meryl is very knowledgeable about captions and video. So there's her. She's a wealth of, you know, information. Steve Faulkner is just, he works for TPGI, I believe. And he used to be with the W3C, I believe, or still is maybe. I'd have to double check, but he's just, he's another one. And I'm really trying to get edX. That website has a course from the W3C as well, an introduction to accessibility course they have on there. So if you search for W3C edX, that's E-D-X, you'll probably find that course for an intro to accessibility. There's that as well. A lot of different people. I am happy to answer questions on Twitter. A lot of people are in the accessibility space. Excellent. Thank you so much, Todd. And I think that also brings us to the end of the show where I'd like to ask you about how could people find out more about yourself? Where do they go? What's your Twitter handle? What's your website, et cetera? My Twitter handle is at Todd Libby. That's T-O-D-L-I-B-Y. And my personal website, toddl.dev, T-O-D-L.dev. And I'm usually Todd Libby on social media. And if not that handle, you can find me on my other handle at Cola Bottles. So that's C-O-L-A-B-O-T-L-E-S. Excellent. Thank you so much, Todd. Really appreciate you spending some time with us and teaching us a little bit about accessibility. And thank you so much. Really appreciate it, Todd. Thank you for joining the show. Thank you, Frederick. It was great to be here.